Good morning, everybody. Um, as Arpit said, there's been, I think, a theme going through the keynotes we've heard so far in terms of the importance and the challenges around integration, the importance of interoperability, and the ways that we need to solve that as a community. So um, as we sort of continue to discuss this along our journey. Uh, we have a panel on um, compliance and verification. Uh, we have a number of different perspectives, including a leading open source vendor, a longstanding interoperability and compliance test lab, of course, an operator, and an important standards organization that has long supported the mobile ecosystem. We have decided to actually do the format of this panel a little bit differently, as you might guess from seeing this interesting setup. Inspired by the TV game show Family Feud, we have divided our panelists into two teams. Uh, people will buzz in, first person to hit the buzzer gets to speak. We also are limiting answers to a minute, so you will actually be able to see the timer countdown. And you as the audience is actually going to act as our survey says. So I hope that you can get into the spirit of this, uh, of this panel. So our team blue is made up of Beth Cohen from Verizon and Henry Calvert from uh, the GSMA. Team red is made up with Tom Nadeau from Red Hat and Lincoln Lavoy from UNH IOL. So panelists come forward. Hey. <laughs> So I am not Richard Dawson, but I will do my best to uh, lead us in this game. So let's play Open Networking Feud. All right, first question to our contestants. Given that um, operators will still have to do a fair amount of in-house testing, given that we're not going to probably get to one size fits all for our infrastructure, um, and given that there will still be some things that are specific to any given operator, where do we get the business value? How do you define it and what quantitative and qualitative um, descriptions or metrics? So first panel, sorry, first question, what is the business value of compliance and verification for you? survey says. Uh, so let me make a statement first, which is that open source and standards are not free. Um, so us as operators obviously need to make an investment in you know, joining these communities. And the reason we do that is because it affects our bottom and our top lines um, in a good way. Uh, so for our bottom line, uh, it, it means that we can be, um, time to market is faster because we can rely on the shared resources of, um, of the open standards and the open source communities and the labs to support our efforts across the operator community. There's a lot of hard problems that the operators have to do and sharing the burden is only gonna help. As Amy mentioned, uh, op, you know, uh, infrastructure is hard and it's not our differentiator. So, all right, it's that. <laughs> <laughs> time's up. Thank you, Ms. Cohen. All right, let's throw the question over to our other family. So how do you think about uh, de describing and either quantitative or qualitative fashion the business value of a compliance program? Do we need to buzz in? I buzz. Why not? Because it's fun. <laughs> At least it didn't say that was easy. Right. <laughs> um, so no, it, it, it's about creating like a commonality, I think, right? And, and getting things, that level of interoperability. I mean, there's been a huge amount of talk um, so far about like CNTT, what it's, it's attempting to deliver and will actually kind of allow that ecosystem to build itself up um, where you can actually kind of undo that siloing of, of VNF and the NFVI and, and the, the direct linking that it has to have to allow the portability it's going to make this all kind of be able to grow to scale. So. Okay. Uh, Team Red has still 22 seconds on the clock. Does, uh, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I just want to echo some of the, some of the uh, kind of the points uh, that you just made, but there were also echo, echoes in the presentations from the beginning. Matt, for example, mentioned this about the, the advantages of this kind of consolidated uh, thing. The other thing is, um, that we're, we're that's, that's important is the integration p perspective. Um, <laughs> anyway. All right, so keep track of uh, so sort of two I think general themes here. On the one hand. Um, 
Uh, open source and standards are not free, but the investment uh, does impact the bottom line. Um, on the other hand, sort of the uh, portability and interoperability of integrated systems. So survey says, this is you audience, uh, Team Blue. You yeah. should respond to something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Team Red. <Ooh. laughs> I also think survey might be saying I need more coffee, which unfortunately <laughs> is not an answer on the board. <laughs> All right, so second question, contestants. Um, we, ha we are used to in the telecom industry uh, programs around standards-based certification. Uh, we've done them, we sort of know how they look. As we've been looking at how to do uh, compliance and verification in open source, where some of the code is there, but we've still got interoperability challenges, uh, one could definitely argue that we need to think these programs through perhaps in a different way, but also learn from what we have done in certification in the past. So, um, contestants, what do you think are the most important sort of characteristics of a compliance and verification program in open source? And how is it either similar or different from what we've known in the past? <laughs> this one I think actually is really easy. I mean, this has been a fundamental driver of the way we've structured OVP from the beginning, which is it's about the community, it's about a community process. Um, and that, that's everything from the, the entire story arc of what is certification and what does that mean, right? Like it's the setting of the requirements, where are those coming from? Getting the community buy-in, getting the, and when I say community buy-in, that really does include the customer buy-in too from the operators that the, those requirements are gonna meet their requirements and their needs. It's getting the community buy-in on how that testing is implemented and designed in such a way. And then it's also making sure that there is a review process and a submission process that actually aligns well with the open source. And then lastly, um, from that is who actually does the testing, right? So traditionally, um, and being a lab, I'm saying this, traditionally lab, it was always in a single lab, whereas we've tried to move to a process where it can actually involve the entire community being able to submit the results into uh, that program. Team Blue. Well, I think uh, from the GSMA's, oh, <laughs> had to hit the buzzer, didn't you? Right, that's going to lose three seconds. Um, <laughs> from the GSMA's point of view, looking at a bit of the history, you know, the buzzwords that are coming out that I just love are collaboration and consistency. And GSMA has always really driven the operators to be interoperable to drive scale. Okay, so if we have consistent profiles, we call it profiles in our language in, in the operator uh, uh, community. If we have consistent profiles that are actually known, it reduces the number of test cases that have to be done uh, on, on the boxes or on the systems or the software or the stacks or the distros that you're actually putting out there. It reduces the number of case studies because they become learnt and they become well understood and people can drive through that very quickly. That can only happen through collaboration. If you're actually doing it in a silo, you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it for others. And that is what we're trying to bring together with CNTT is an actually understanding of that knowledge base to, to make sure the consistency is going to drive less testing that has to be done. All right. So let's go, let's actually let one more person buzz in for this question. <laughs> Mr. Nadeau. Yeah, just to add to that, one of the things that's important to add to uh, what my colleague said earlier is that um, is that not only do the specs uh, uh, explain what needs to be tested, but they can actually be implemented by the vendors. So it's important that the community includes not just the, 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 the operators, but also the, the vendors. And they do it in a way that you know, we, can, we can test what needs to be tested and then make it work. I want to I add to that operators and testers, uh, operators and the vendors and the entire community has to participate. It fails if we don't do that. That is essential. Right. Okay, so let's go out to survey says. Um, first answer that we heard was one of the important aspects of doing an open source compliance program is that it aligns uh, with sort of open community processes and that the governance of the program is open and the test labs themselves are open. Uh, answer two about the importance of the repeatability and the way to take learnings from that. Um, answer three, somehow split, 
magically between Team Blue and Team Red um, is that um, it is about sort of the involvement of the vendor community alongside the operator community. So, survey says, answer one. <laughs> survey, so, survey is still saying I want more coffee. <laughs> All right, red. survey says, answer two. Hey. Survey says, the somehow split team, answer three. <laughs> all right, honestly, I think it's those tough. are all right answers, um, and they all actually dovetail into each other. If you might notice, I just worked in the word dovetail, which is the name of one of our compliance projects in OPNFE. Um, but that actually, they do dovetail in together. That the way that we look at things from a compliance perspective in open source is for it to be a more open process, that we want everyone working together, that we want to take the learnings public, that we want testing to be able to be done in a variety of ways, but that we also want to get consistency and interoperability and take things from there. All right, so question three, panelists. I think this one, I, I hope this one is a bit provocative. So we've been hearing a lot about cloud native, and I think there's a recognition that cloud native is an, an incredibly important uh, thing that we, you know, sort of both in terms of the technology, but more in terms of the process around things like CI, CD, DevOps, et cetera. So if we are thinking about networks as actually being moving to something like DevOps and CI, CD constantly changing, that the applications are going to be constantly updating with you know, small changes constantly into production, which I know is still a lot of times a goal for many of us in telecom. Um, so if we think about CI, CD, if we think about cloud native, if we think about DevOps as important drivers for the future of the industry, is a badge-based compliance program actually sort of the right thing for us to be focusing on? Um, you know, there's a certain assumption of stability and version control and version numbers perhaps built into that. So third question is, is a compliance program incompatible with or compatible with, and if so, how, with CI, CD, and agile, and um, you know, revolutionary cloud native networks? Tom, uh, I should have guessed that actually it would be Red Hat. <laughs> it's critical given the, the nature of, of how people do business today in software. I mean, we saw several presentations with stacks of various components, and testing that integration is, is paramount to the thing working. And, um, and, it, and, and so the CI CD pipeline is actually a way uh, that you can do that in a distributed way with different vendors contributing, uh, also integrating OVP tests, for example, in that whole thing. So it's, it's really critical to, to the thing being successful, I think. I'll steal the remaining time of, um, I actually think it's part of the CI CD process. Right, and so like, there, there's always going to be a driving force to actually move the software through that badging program, creating the value that that has there from the industry into the customers, as part of going into that CI/CD process and stuff like that. And if you look at like that combined with the NFVI layers and what is kind of come out of the NFVI, I think that's where we're actually aiming. Yeah, you know, actually, I'm going to, because I think there was something interesting there. So as the host, I get to arbitrarily change the rules on stage. Let's, re let's actually give you another team, Red, another minute on the clock to talk about this particular. Right. Yeah. So it, you've got to start from somewhere, right? Like it, you've got a day zero thing that needs to come out. So if you've got a badge that you're using to kind of set some bar on that initially, you're getting to a kind of a, a base state that you know what it is and where it's going to start from. And then from there, you start running your CI CD processes internally and relying on the upstreams to be doing similar. And, and again, back to that community thing, contribute back to the community so that those upstream processes start to align with like your needs and making sure that the community processes are fulfilling their roles too. And then as you're pulling in new devices, new VNFs, if those are badged and those have um, you know, some level of testing coming into it before they come into your space, then that even better suits 
your environment initially to run on top of something else that was bad. So it's kind of building that complete ecosystem all the way through. And the consistency. Um. <laughs> so. He hadn't even gotten to the end of his buzzer, Beth. That's okay. <laughs> it's tension. It's tension. She's stealing it. <laughs> I'm stealing it. Yeah. All right, Beth. So, you, you have now stolen the question. So <laughs> I have stolen the question. So I would argue that uh, uh, cloud native is going to make everything that much more difficult. So the reality of the, work, of, of the operator's position is operators have become integrators. It's not what we officially do for a living, uh, but that is what we do to support what we do for a living. And the, not that I'm against testing, I'm not at all, of course, against testing. Uh, I love testing, but I think that um, all the cloud native stuff that's coming is just gonna make testing just super hard. So that's the challenge. <laughs> I want to add You're stealing it. from your own teammate, I love this. <laughs> Give people buzzers and look what happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> University challenge, I'm used to. Um, I, I, think, I, I think there's a, a definite, once you've got your infrastructure uh, sorted out and, and you're developing on top of that, then you know, the repetitiveness becomes easier. But it's a massive cultural change for operators who really basically do Murphy's Law. You know, they put it in. Thank you. You can reset the clock. He can have some more time. <laughs> you, you, you deploy something and you don't touch it because you don't want it to break at all, mm. which is just not DevOps. <laughs> yeah. Not um, at all. <laughs> at, but at but all. we do that. <laughs> and, and Matt brought it up. He, he, he basically says you build your capability that you actually got, and then you're, you're, you're developing on top of that. Uh, and that will, bring that will bring customer experience, that will bring other value benefits that you can see very quickly. So I don't think we should be afraid of doing deployments and patches and upgrades every day. Um, you've just got to have a confidence infrastructure, confident in your infrastructure that it's going to work and it's going to be there. Yeah, I was going to say that, uh, just to add to that. You can't agree. The, it's a feud. I have to agree. <laughs> It's a reality. The, the, fluidity, the fluidity of the integration and, and what you're just talking about, the, again, the, the many pieces, parts, and the evolution, the constant evolution, uh, the, the quote uh, earlier, you know, embrace it or die, right? I mean, that's the reality. And the, and the cloud native actually makes that, like you were saying, the, it invites even more of that. And so unless we can embrace it with a consistent CI pipeline and testing strategy, um, it's going to be difficult making that work. Just because it's hard doesn't mean you can skip it. Right. <laughs> So actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually intrigued uh, sort of by what you said, Beth, uh, because on the one hand, so you're saying sort of the introduction of cloud native is going to make things more challenging from a test and integration perspective. On the other hand, if I talk to sort of a cloud native developer, they actually will say sort of the things like automation and CI CD and the you know, you know, building and system testing maybe in from the beginning should make things easier. Um, maybe we could get some disagreement once again, as, as, as the panel debates. Um, you know, do, well, I'll, I'll actually, I'm just going to, you can still use the buzzer, but, but Tom, I mean, do you agree with Beth that, that going yeah. cloud native will make it more challenging? I, I do. I mean, I don't, I don't think we're going to go back to a world of manual testing. You know, I mean, the, the, the presentations today, what we're seeing in the industry, um, and again, it's, it's getting more, more complicated but it's, but it's getting more complicated for a reason. And again, because it's hard, doesn't mean we can't, um, can't test it and, and make it work right, but it requires that we do that. Okay. Yeah. Team, team I, Blue, I, a rebuttal. I wanna add something. So in controversy, which is that at the end of the day, it's about the operations because that's what we live and die on. And if we don't have that cell phone work 100% of the time, we're in trouble, Doesn't matter. right? Our, we have five nines, six nines SLAs. And uh, you know, our operations people freak out over this stuff because they, they want it to be so reliable. They want to know that it's going to work. So th this, is, this is coming down to the difference, I think, between like test and production versus a CI CD pipeline that's actually testing before deployment though, right? And how do you do those best practices? Got to do both. Anything from our from our other panelists? See, I'm, get, I'm getting nice as this is going on and giving everyone a chance to speak. 
Yeah, I, I mean, we've seen this as, as, as software brings flexibility into networks, okay? And that can, can be a double-edged sword, and we're, we're discussing this all the same. But it was the same when we brought Vaulty in. Vaulty is a highly configurable uh, software application on a device and in a network, effectively. And, and, and the ver different variants we got around the world is phenomenal. And I've spent the last three years sorting out all those differences. That's consistency. If we can get to a consistent, this is the consistent infrastructure we've got to provide, then the other experience applications on top are going to come and the value is going to come at the end of the day. But that consistency is so important. So to get the base core infrastructure right, get the testing process procedures for that right and then heart content go for it you know on the software on the service and software layer you know fine okay. one final question and this one we are going to do properly family feud style um, what do you think is the most important priority for the sort of next thing to do for us as a community in our compliance and verification program All right we are going to do the timer this time so the most important thing in compliance and testing is testing the real things. So this, this is the biggest challenge upstream right now, in my opinion, are the, the VNFs and the CNFs in OVP testing and so on um, are not the production VNFs and CNFs. And to your point, if you really want to solidly test that thing before it goes to production to meet all of your, your specs, we need to do that. Otherwise, we have to do it uh, back in the lab you know, in a private lab or whatnot. So doing that upstream, that's, that's a key ingredient. I would add, you need. <laughs> I'm gonna steal, you, steal it for you. Steal the time. So I have lived the, the vendor who, you know, we were in production, the vendor hadn't done their job, and we had to take it into the lab and say, no, guys, what you told us was wrong. And that, you know, that put egg on our face with our customers. <laughs> Not good. Lincoln. Right, so I, <laughs> just to add, just to add to egg this. on your face. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, like, I think that the biggest next steps is to get uh, the community resources in place to do exactly that, to actually be able to test these real things on commonly identified infrastructure, commonly identified, you know, stacks. You know, and, and we've all said that that's the whole point of like, what is OpenStack, what is OPNFV, what are the integration projects and the testing projects that we're doing there, but we're not yet doing that fully as a community, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't be putting the efforts into something like CNTT and stuff like that. So let's take that, let's actually then, you know, build the reference architecture, build the reference implementation to actually stand that up, and then give that as a community resource to then bring in the rest of the parts and the pieces to that pipeline to actually make that happen. And we can tick all the boxes at the same time that we talked about at the beginning of this in terms of like, how do you do the open programs of allowing that to feed back to like a badging program so that when Verizon or AT&T or others bring in something to their lab, it's got the badge. <laughs> all right, Team Blue, any last rebuttal or addition yeah, to that just question? Just rebuttal, just for, for Beth, um, you know, I, I've spent 20 years in, in operators, mainly in, in Asia. When something goes wrong, it's the operator's name that's out there in the press. Yeah. And they suffer badly. That is, that is the real reason everyone gets very tetchy about the performance that is actually delivered. I think we need to collaborate. We've got to collaborate. We've got to set the right expectations. Those expectations um, will lead to success. And my last statement is we need more suppliers in the industry. Yeah. We have got a drought of suppliers. We've got some brilliant suppliers out there, don't get me wrong. But we need more diversity in our supply chain. Well, let me, let me add to that. We have a whole bunch of partners and vendors that we work with who aren't participating in, this, in these tests at all. Yeah, that was my point. That's a too, significant that... problem for us. Yeah. All right. So... All right. Survey says... Um, now I'm trying to remember what everyone said. Um, test the real thing. Test, test the real, the real thing. thing. Um, more resources into the community to build the tests. Um, more vendors. More vendors. Uh, so related to resources and performance. and performance testing. So survey says answer one. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> survey says answer two. <laughs>
<laughs> Survey says, answer three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, she's the customer, so really, the right answer is always that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Wait, answer four. Wait, the host four. is biased now? <laughs> <laughs> answer four. <laughs> Okay, so ending on a uh, slightly more uh, collaborative and serious note, um, I hope that you have had fun with our format. We wanted to shake things up, get a little bit of back and forth. I uh, hope that you have enjoyed the way that we've set up the game show. I have ideas for next year. I think next year I want to play The Weakest Link. <laughs> <laughs> Um, maybe not. All acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, we're sitting up here dividing in teams and buzzing in, you know, because it's you know because it's fun because we want to express different opinions and we want to debate. But the the reality is that we do all collaborate with each other. I work with all the people on this stage every day. We are all really in the same boat as an ecosystem. Um, you know, to make this successful really does require all of us working as uh, a community. And so on that. No, we've got a little bit of time left. So I'm going to give one minute on the clock for any last thoughts around community collaboration and sort of success around this in open source. And we'll start with Henry and one minute on the clock. Uh, I'll ask panels for one sort of final thought. I think uh, the activity with CNTT, uh, of course, is bringing the collaboration um, and uh, the, the consistency together that we actually need in the testing environment. Uh, it, it is, there's a lot of effort that has to be put down that's completely, uh, you know, we respect that, but the benefits are known and they are actually are, are large. Um, we want to, the, there is a wider community we have to reach. It, it's phenomenal how, how big that community is. There are vendors not turning up. Uh, and, and, and everyone needs to be talking off the same message for this to actually work. A bit of unity is good. Competition is always our problem, okay? It is the downfall that we actually have. So let's see if we can just take that whilst we develop um, the, the testing and the conformance plans to get things right. Let's just put competition to the, to the side a little bit and work collaboratively together. All right, you ended early, well done. It is so much fun to hear that buzzer, isn't it? Um, Time is money. <laughs> Beth. Uh, so, so what I'd like to say is that um, there's, there's a lot of, um, as, as uh, Henry mentioned, there's a lot of competition that really isn't the competition. It, you know, Amy mentioned it earlier. Yeah, telecoms compete. They don't compete about infrastructure because nobody, none of our customers give a crap about our infrastructure. They just want it to work. <laughs> and, and we want our vendors to make sure that it works for us because, as Henry said, it's our name on, <laughs> on that. And, you know, if it goes down, who call, you know, who do they call? They don't call Red Hat. They call Verizon. <laughs> We're not in the press release. You are. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's exactly right. So, so, you know, we need to all work together to solve this problem because we're not going to solve it uh, separately. It makes no sense. All right. Let's reset the timer for Mr. Lavoy. So the buzzer is fun. Um, I'm going to build a little bit on what Henry said, which is, is talking about kind of that competition and like, can we create some processes and environment where we can kind of put that aside for a little bit? And I'm thinking specifically around like the Plugfest events and stuff that we have, right? In terms of like, let's cre create the community resources that we need to be able to enable this testing, create the environment where that testing can actually take place and can take place where it, we try to set aside or push away some of the competition for a little bit and actually work collaboratively to solve the problems and stuff to actually build this and pull in that, those, that best practice, that lesson learned, contribute back to it, and then push that back up to the community resource pool, i.e. the open source programs, the OVP programs, and the way that that testing is structured, such that we're actually kind of building that complete picture that then the DevOps teams and everybody can pull internally to their processes at the operator and stuff that like is being done at Red Hat and similar, right? All right, finally. Mr. Nadeau. <laughs> he's taking the buzzer. Taking he's going one. to steal the buzzer. Be beware if he shows up in any of your sessions later in the week. These will be great for the next conference call. Um, yeah, for me, it's really simple. There's, there's really three 
ingredients to this recipe, right? There's, we're talking about collaboration, uh, consistency, and using the real things. And, and those three things combined, I think will get us, you know, the, the cake we're trying to make. Um, and, and, and that's the, the kind of the theme that runs through everything we've been talking about today. So for me, it's really simple okay. uh, how to achieve that. All right, with that, I'm going to now declare myself, survey says. Um, so survey says, all of y'all are awesome and great sports. Um, we have a challenge ahead of us, but I believe in the power of community and ecosystem to do it. And um, thank you, audience, for waking up and giving us some of your participation in that as well. So thank you all to panel. Thank you to all of the contestants for playing Open Networking Feud. Ooh.